Hello everybody, today we are back in the Dordogne, we are uh, in a small valley of the Black Perigord which is uh, well known for the incredible number of uh, prehistoric archaeological uh, sites that are found uh, here and there. The road is not very good within uh, a short moment we should reach a place where I could park the car and then after we will walk along the cliffs in order to to reach the entrance of a small prehistoric cave. Alright, now that we parked the car, we're going to start to walk a little. We are going to follow a track which is not very easy, but uh, anyway, very interesting. Uh, yes, we have to make a little effort to discover this prehistoric cave. Okay, I, I spoke of uh, prehistory and yes, this area is very rich. Just to give you an example, right uh, around us, there are four prehistoric caves. One actually is open to the public. Of course, it's not a second Lascaux or another Altamira. Nevertheless, those caves are very interesting. Most of the time, they only uh, contain some uh, engravings, dating back most of them from the Magdalenian times. Uh, but that's enough to show that prehistoric men came here and used the caves. Okay, follow me and be careful. Huh? So, as you can see, uh, the surroundings are still uh, very green and also very mineral. It's a beautiful landscape. And all that is due to the fact that at the base of the cliff, there is a small river that is uh, kind of uh, keeping some dampness in uh, this particular valley. And actually now we are going to get into uh, that kind of uh, cave. Actually it's not a cave, it's more like a natural tunnel, but it was also inhabited. Uh, we do not really know when. Look at that. You see? not a cave you see the entrance and you will see the exit nevertheless if you carefully watch you can see some evidence of some uh, human uh, work for example here you see that uh, the rock has been uh, dug out with a pickaxe so obviously it's quite recent I would say uh, some uh, maybe 500 years or or less, or a little more, who knows. There are some uh, other evidences that are found in front of this area. You can see that here too, it was kind of uh, dug out, probably to install a kind of stone wall. You can also see some uh, uh, diggings here. And uh, here, for example, holes for, uh, for beams. So all that is dating back probably to the Middle Ages. You see that there was a passageway, a passageway that was uh, a little uh, modified, carving the, the rock. For example, here, you can see that uh, the rock, there was probably a, an angle here, which was uh, suppressed. Here too, you can see the marks of uh, pickaxes in order to make the passageway more comfortable. Let's go. Well, let's take this example. You see uh, what we call a, a rocky shelter. It looks uh, absolutely uh, natural. But actually, if you carefully watch again, you can see some evidence of uh, man uh, work. For example, be careful. Look at those uh, square holes for beams. It shows you that there was probably a small uh, 
wooden uh, roof and uh, there was here a kind of uh, small dwelling probably used during the Middle Ages. We are not speaking at all of prehistory, yeah? for now. Come on, you better understand here uh, the shape of uh, the cliff. You find first uh, an, an upper part which is often uh, overhanging, with beautiful uh, uh, color of the, of the limestone. Then after a kind of uh, platform where we are walking now, and then after a small cliff and downstairs the valley. Soon we are going to walk under a very long uh, rock shelter. It's about uh, 40 meters. It's quite uh, deep, about uh, 5 meters. Uh, and uh, it was also inhabited, not by the prehistorics, we don't know, but by uh, more recent uh, populations. And you can see that right from here, when you watch the middle of the cliff, you can see those uh, horizontal lines, which are not natural. They were carved by men. They are kind of drip edges that would avoid the rainwater to get inside the dwelling, but instead it would drip on the ground in front of the rock shelter. Okay, let's go. So now that we are in that uh, rock shelter, you can better see the dimensions. A very important uh, overhang that could be used by men as a dwelling, maybe by prehistoric men, although we have no, no evidence, and of course by uh, modern men. Again, I think that the, the ground is too flat to be natural and sometimes we will see some uh, marks left by, by those men. Well, and before we leave that uh, rock shelter, you can see on the ground plenty of little uh, uh, holes, plenty of little craters. People uh, think that uh, they are left by the water, water drops when they when they hit the ground. Not at all. It's a kind of little uh, trap made by a small uh, insect. It's kind of uh, trapping the ants that are walking on this kind of mined uh, land. The name of this insect is uh, lion ant. It's a terrible insect and it's uh, waiting for its uh, prey in the bottom of the crater and as soon as an ant passes and falls into the crater it's literally vampirized by this uh, lion ant. Well, something uh, that is uh, quite common along those uh, cliffs is, the, is this kind of uh, uh, you see it's kind of a cave. It is the result of a, a rockfall that happened probably thousands and thousands of, of years. And the story goes that in the 60s a group of spelunkers was uh, exploring around. One of them uh, entered one of these holes. It's not sure that it is this one, eh? not sure at all. And he found what we call a fibule in French. It's kind of a needle that was used to maintain uh, the, the garment in uh, the right uh, place and uh, this fibule was made of uh, out of bronze but it was belonging to the iron times in other words the gallic times so nothing else was done they just uh, hide the entrance to the the, the, the grave and left uh, prom promising to to come back one of these days uh, unfortunately they came back uh, such a long time after the discovery that they, co they could never find exactly where was the entrance and uh, still we do not know so somewhere underneath is a Gallic uh, a grave which is waiting to uh, a new discoverer here we are look at that this this entrance is absolutely beautiful in a second we will get inside the cave in order to discover uh, the engravings dating back to the Magdalenian let's go 
So hello again. As you can see, it took me several months to get inside the cave. Uh, now we are in the middle of uh, winter and the weather is very cold. I think that deeper in the cave uh, it will be warmer. So this cave was uh, always widely open. Actually there are three entrances. This is the, the main entrance. And the cave is listed as a uh, monument historique since 1974. Uh, but the prehistoric engravings were discovered much earlier in 1903 by two well-known prehistorians. One was uh, Denis Peroni and the other one was Abbot uh, Henri Boy. It's a typical cave in this area, because it's very small, only 35 meters long, about 6 meters uh, wide. The ceiling can uh, reach the height of uh, 6, 7 meters. The cave is divided in uh, three sections. The first section is uh, what they call the vestibule. It's a kind of uh, antechamber where we are now. It is still uh, receiving some uh, daylight and in the middle there is this big uh, stalagmite which is like uh, a central uh, pillar. So to my right there is a second section. It's a smaller room. You see that it is closed by this uh, uh, metal uh, fence and uh, the third section is the longest, the main room that we're gonna explore uh, very soon. Before starting the exploration, I want to say that this cave was entirely devastated since more than uh, 100 years by illegal diggers. In the ground you can see everywhere holes. Some uh, of these holes are, uh, I would say, new. I mean that uh, these illegal diggings never stopped. And soon we're going to see that these uh, diggers committed irreparable uh, decades in the bottom of the cave. So let's go. So let me show you one first representation. It's an engraving. It's uh, what is called uh, an oval sign. It was uh, authenticated in 1982. And according to uh, its uh, discoverer, it could date back to one of the first periods of Upper Paleolithic. In other words, uh, several tens of thousands of years. So not yesterday. And here we are already in uh, the bottom of the cave. You can see that it is ending in a kind of uh, small uh, alcove. And listen that. In uh, 1981, two prehistorians discovered close to the ground a small representation of a bison half carved in the wall and half modeled with clay. They just took a, a picture, made a quick drawing and left. A few weeks later, when they came back for further research, this representation had uh, already been uh, destroyed by uh, those uh, diggers. And it's really irreparable because this kind of, uh, of representation is very rare in uh, prehistoric art. So you see now how damageable are these uh, uh, unauthorized uh, diggings for uh, prehistoric research. So now something else. In uh, 1977, Somewhere in this uh, narrow passage, uh, Spelunkers discovered, hidden in a, in a hole, four uh, bronze bracelets dating back to the Middle Bronze Age. In other words, uh, let's say 3200 years before us. And now these, uh, these bracelets are displayed in the Museum of Archaeology of Perigueux. So let's go now to the third room. It's a beautiful cave. Careful. Oh. 
So this uh, third uh, room is closed by this uh, metal uh, gate. Actually, it's not only meant to protect the representations from vandals, but it is also a kind of uh, screen against the last uh, uh, rays of natural light. It is very poor here, but uh, nevertheless uh, sufficient for some uh, microalgae to grow. And in the past, they seriously eroded uh, those representations, those engravings. On this wall, there are uh, several uh, lines engraved in, uh, in the rock. Actually now, only one representation is uh, legible. It is uh, right in front of me. It is a horse. It's quite in bad condition, but probably you can still see the tail somewhere here, the line of the back, some uh, strokes here for perhaps a mane, here the forehead of the, 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 the horse and the neck. The rest is uh, much less uh, legible, perhaps uh, a thigh here and uh, the beginning of, uh, of a leg. And that is all. We are not going to stay here very long. Uh, what I forgot to tell you is that this representation is belonging to the Magdalenian and usually it is dated about 13, 14,000 years before us. So it's now time to leave. I hope that you liked uh, this short uh, exploration. I know, uh, of course, that I did not uh, show you uh, another Lascaux or another major cave. Nevertheless, it's quite uh, moving to see some uh, witness of uh, our ancestors' presence. Okay, let's come back to, to last summer. Well, it's time to, to go back. It's already very late. Uh, we are walking on a private uh, track. It's a private land around us. Um, and the cave is also private. We had the permission, exceptional permission, to tour it. So I want to thank the, the owner, but usually it's impossible. Nevertheless, if you want to explore this area, there are plenty of uh, uh, public tracks, les chemins de grande randonnée, and uh, they are very beautiful and it's legal to walk there. So, okay, let's go back.